So just starting, before we get to the actual scripting side of things, just going through some of the more advanced features of Bash. Uh, most of the things we're going to go over now you can use in scripts and vice versa. A script is kind of just a formal way to like list a recipe of commands that then all run at the same time so you can reuse it and all the nice things with, you get with programming. But pretty much most things you can do in a script or everything you can do in a script you can do on the command line. We could write a big for loop right now and run it. You just don't tend to do that because it's a pain to type multi-line stuff and often you want to program your run multiple times. By the same nature, the stuff I do now you can also use in scripts. So a lot of this goes back and forth. So one of the first things we're going to look at is kind of the idea of uh, one of the core ideas of your shell is input and output um, and the way your shell handles that, and in particular the way it handles output. So when we run a program like ls, it spits something to the screen, right? We're getting some output from this program. In Linux, there's actually two main ways that programs can output. They can either output on what we call standard out, which is what you're seeing here, or they can output on standard error. Uh, standard error is traditionally used to print error messages, standard out is traditionally used to print everything else. The reason we have these two different ways of outputting is it makes it easier for us to filter later on and say we can catch all the errors versus we can catch all the non-errors, so on and so forth. So what you normally see printed on your terminal is actually a combination of both. By default, when you run a program, your terminal can out both. You don't really know. I mean, I can tell you LS happens to be printing out what's on standard out, but if that were standard error, you wouldn't know. If we run a compiler or something like GCC and I pass it and it's not a C file. So it's tossing some errors. Uh, these, we'll find out in a sec. These are probably on standard out. Normally when your compiler prints errors or are not standard out, these are probably on standard error. Normally when your compiler prints errors, it sends them to the error, uh, standard error instead of standard out. When you have a program that throws an error message, it almost always sends it to standard error, not standard out. So how do you deal with this? Uh, how can you change? So a common use case is you want to, you're running a big program that's going to be spitting out output over the course of several hours, and you want to capture that all to a file. But maybe you want, while you're capturing the file, you want to make sure the errors still show up on the screen. So if you're just glancing over, you can see if something's gone wrong versus it's working correctly or it's not being printed. There's a couple of different ways to do this, uh, and it kind of underlines this fundamental concept of your term, your shell is doing something with this output, and we can manipulate what it does with it. And that's going to come in handy in a lot of situations. I wrote a really basic C program, just called hello.c, that essentially does two things. First, it prints out hello standard out, and it prints it out to standard out, and then it prints out hello standard error, and it prints it to standard error. So this is essentially just a control way for us to have one line on standard out and one line on standard error. So if, uh, if I compile this, um, and run the output file, you'll see by default I get both these lines printed in my terminal. One's on standard error, one's on standard out. The one that says standard error is on standard error, the one that says standard out is on standard out. Now there's a couple of things we can do with these. Uh, let's try piping the output to a file. So whenever you're working on the terminal, you have what we call the redirection operator. And there's a couple of them, but the base one is just a single character. And what that allows you to do is it says take whatever this command outputs on standard out and instead of turning it to the terminal, write it into whatever file you have here. So we can just create a file called output. Uh, if you want to put a .txt ending on it again, endings don't really mean anything in Linux. But you can do something like that. If we run this command, you'll see now we actually only get one line on the screen. Because we took the standard out, we sent it to this file and we're still left with the error on the screen. If we print out this file, we'll see the other line of our output there. Now, by default, the arrow will print and it'll overwrite the file each time. So if I go into this file, uh, we can actually do this with other commands. So the echo command, by default, just prints something to the screen, like so. But I can take the output of echo and I can pipe it to a file. So if I pipe it to that same file I just had and have that file again, you'll see it actually overwrote the contents of the file. So by default, when you use the single error, it's going to replace whatever file you have here. Uh, be aware of that. You're going to erase this file in doing this. Sometimes you don't want to erase the file. Sometimes you just want to append to it. So you just want to add this to the end of the file. This is useful if you have a file that's like a running log. To get that behavior, you use two arrows. So you do something like this. We have it there twice. If I repeat it again, we'll get the third time, so on and so forth. Questions on? Single direction or pending? Good. We can get into more interesting 
questions. So, like I said, by default, this is going to keep standard error on the screen and send standard out to the file. Sometimes we want to do the opposite. Sometimes we want to print standard error to the file uh, instead of standard out. So if we wanted to do that, we actually use an ampersand 2 indicates, so this number here indicates which, uh, which stream we're essentially sending to the file. So 1 is going to be standard error, standard out. 2 is going to be standard error. There are actually as many as you want, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I mean, you can set up additional ones if you want to do more complex things. We won't really get into that. But the ones you normally end up using are either one or two, and really you don't use one that often because one is the default. So why bother typing in one? So I mean, I can type in one. It does the same thing that it did a minute ago. Uh, I lied to you. Sorry. It should be dollar sign one. So that does the same thing we did before. If we change this to two, So if you want to pipe this to a file, you just use number in front of it. You don't need the ampersand there. So if we do two to output, we'll see now it's sending the error to this file and it's printing the output directly to the screen. So one does what one is the same as just having the caret, two is the same as going to the file, and you can still use the double arrow, and that just chooses whether you're pending or whether you're overwriting. So that's how you control whether you're taking standard error or standard out. You can direct one into a file, and you can direct the other one to the screen. Sometimes you want to save them both to the file. If you want to send them both to a file, you just do ampersand here. So instead of a number here, you just use the ampersand, and that will send both standard error and standard out to the file. Sometimes you want to do even more interesting things, like this is actually going to do what we just did. But you can actually send standard error. Earlier to standard out. So this is saying take standard error, send it to standard out, and now we can send standard out to the file. We'll introduce two operators at once. Um, so this is going to take standard error, it's going to send it standard out, and now we're using a new operator. This is called the pipe operator. This is redirection, this is piping. The difference is they do a similar concept. Redirection you always use to send to a file. Piping you use to send to another command. So if you essentially want the output of this command to become the input to this command, you use a pipe. If you want the output of this command to get written to a file, you use the introduction operator. So we can use the less command. Um, less just as a pager, like I said in the first session, it's just going to essentially print the output to the screen. So if we do this, we'll see we now get both standard error and standard out because we took standard error, we piped it standard out, and then this always operates on standard out. So we took standard out and we sent it to less. This would be as opposed to if we just did this, we would only get the regular output there. The error output still got printed to the screen, or we can, you know, we can, uh, we can actually flip them. So we can take standard error, we can send it to standard out. And now we'll get neither and less, because they're both getting put into the screen. This might not work. I think I should be able to do something like this. Okay. That didn't work what I wanted to do. 
Um, but you can essentially remap these any way you want and then pipe them to the files. So if you want to send both standard error, the, the, the standard usage patterns are if you want to send both of them to a file, you just use the ampersand. You don't try to send one to the other and not one to the file. But if you want to send both of them to a program, you need to use this. You need to take standard error, send the standard out, and then pipe both of them into this program. So one of the main reasons this Piping things to less is handy sometimes. You have like a big output of some program, you just want to keep it on a page or so you can scroll through it later. More useful is the grep command, which I won't we can spend an entire session doing grep. Grep is a regular expression search command, so it essentially is going to compare the output of this to a series of regular expressions. Regular expressions are basically ways of matching text. So if you've used like the ampersand to, to do like a wildcard expression before, that's like a very, very, very basic form of your regular expressions. Regular expressions lets you get way more complicated and specify patterns like I want to capture, I want to match anything that has the first two letters being between A and C in the alphabet and the next three letters being between one and five, followed by two symbols, followed by a period, followed by three letters in the English alphabet. Like it allows you to specify really specific patterns like that. It's incredibly powerful. Learning regular expressions is a good thing to do. But by default, without even worrying about all the details of regular expressions, we can just pipe this. So I'm going to pipe both of them. So we're going to do two and one, and then send them both to grep. And then I'm going to tell grep to search for the phrase standard out. And by default, only grep, the things grep matches are going to get printed to the screen. So if we do that, it only printed one line, because only one line is standard out. If I change this to standard error, I get the other line. If I change this to something like hello, I get both lines. So piping things to grep and then searching, this is a really handy way for you to like quickly search a big file, right? So if I wanted to search that the source code for my C file, I can cat it. So I'm going to print to the screen. On the instead of the screen, I want to send it to grep, and I want to pull up any line of code that has the word hello in it. Probably because it's today's sensitive. Thank you. So, um, Grep has a ton of options. You can turn off case sensitivity. You can turn on more advanced this and that, and so on and so forth. But by default, those are the two lines in my program that hello, so on and so forth. Also, Andy, there's a thing I really like using with Grip that if you guys like doing a lot of like uh, commands, and then if, like, you want to do a command, you you did. So history and the Grip, then like even part of this command so you can retrieve it. Again. Right, so, uh, stop the stream dash, right? Where's my, where's the history file store by default? Oh, do you just, you just type in the word history? Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. This is actually stored in the file. I can pull it up here in a sec. But the history command uh, basically tells you, like he was saying, lists all the commands in that you've run recently. It has some on it, but it's pretty high. So you could pipe this into grep. So if I wanted to find every time I typed in, I've done redirection recently, right? Uh, okay. We won't do that. This gets a little more complicated because some of these are reserved. So you need to escape them. I should have pipe it in. Uh, what's the point of sending standard out to standard here? Uh, because the pipe operator by default so sending standard out standard error? Yeah. So sometimes you might have, it doesn't get used that often. Uh, the use case is, it's more when you're working in scripts or something, but sometimes you have the output of some command and you want to make sure that gets sent, maybe that's going to be an error message, even though for the command itself it wasn't. Yeah. So you want to pipe that standard error, so from your program it actually gets pushed out on error instead of on regular output. Uh, you could also use it on, there are situations where you have things that only operate on standard error, so sometimes it's handy to be able to push it to that. You don't see it used that often, but the point is, it's a flexible system. You can do whatever you want. OK, so that covers redirection and piping. Piping is incredibly powerful in Linux. This bash facilitates this, but this underlines a lot of what we do, uh, a lot of kind of the traditional Unix thinking. You can use pipe multiple times. So I could actually run a grep search on this once, right? So the first grep search produced this output. And now my second one, I could filter that and only say, I want to see anything that involved doing this on the, anything that has that in the string, right? 
So I can actually filter on this as many times as I want. I could take the output of this and I could send it. There's a program called <coughs> Sort that's going to take the output and then sort it, which is very exciting in this sense because they're already sorted by default. Uh, I think Sort has a we'll look up the NAND page. Yeah. So if we do sort r, though, it's going to sort in reverse. So, so on and so forth, but you can see I can essentially build a rather powerful program just by stringing together all of these little programs. And this is a really core Unix philosophy. We have gone away from this a little bit, but the original Unix philosophy is you should have a bunch of simple programs that do exactly one thing, and then we will give you pipes. And with pipes, you can build more complex programs just by using those simple programs. So the boundaries of what you can do with this are pretty much limitless. Um, so tail is a command that says, just show me the last three lines of output whenever I got input. So I mean, I can essentially go through and reduce what's originally a big list to a single thing. I could go through and start piping this into, I, I could write my own program. So I could write a program in C that went through and replaced every D with an A. It's actually a program that does that. It's called set. Uh, it does that general find something and replace it kind of thing. Uh, but there's a huge, the bound options here are pretty limitless. So, Rely on this pipe operator. It allows you to do a lot of cool things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Questions on any of that? Okay. 